Now to actually integrate our uploader with the model, because uh, it's in our uploader's file, but the model doesn't know it exists yet, so we have to let it know. And so you just go to models and go to the model you want to add it to. So right under our validates presence of, just type in mount uploader, so that's going to mount it, and then type in the file uh, or whatever the attribute in the database is. So uh, image is what we called it, so we'll do image, and then just call the type of uploader. So we want to do photo uploader. Now, none of the things besides mount uploader are things that are reserved words or anything. So, uh, so if we had called image like uh, the way that they did in their tutorial uh, avatar, uh, then we would, in our mount uploader, we would say avatar. So the, all this is, is it's talking to whatever uh, whatever data attribute is in the schema file. So if you go into uh, db schema, uh, we know that image is the value. And make sure that's always a string, because that's the only way it will work. So uh, that's the way that works. Now photo uploader, this is just calling the class. And uh, Carrier Wave is uh, deeply well integrated in to know that uh, photo uploader is going to look inside our uploader's directory. It's going to look for a class that matches. And so photo uploader has been added and so it has access to it. All of these are actually um, in this version of Rails. Uh, everything gets uploaded uh, and is available at all times automatically. So, um, But I always put it inside this uploader's directory just as a matter of best practice. So uh, if we had called photo uploader image uploader then right here this would have to be image uploader instead of photo uploader. So that's how it works. That's why the naming structure is set up the way it is. And the next thing we're going to do is integrate Figueroa to handle all of our API keys.